On The Breakfast, we'll take an in-depth analysis of some economic policies that have been talked about by Nigerians like the R200 FX program, sugar tax, limit on dollar spending, narrow redesign and cash withdrawal policy, among others. Also on the breakfast, the fifth alteration to the 1999 constitution may not see the light of day despite one billionaire allocation. What is the implication for our democracy? And don't forget, we'll also be going through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Happy holiday and a Merry Christmas as well. Today's Boxing Day. It's time for you to, you know, unbox and unveil the gifts that you probably would have gotten prior to today. Well, I hope you had yourself a Merry Christmas. And for those who are having, uh, you know, at home, uh, it's okay to sit back and enjoy the show this morning. My name is Messi Bobo. The lineup is quite amazing and interesting. We'll be looking through a top trending as always. Now, uh, first on a top trending is associated with the season, the holiday season. Travelers have actually lamented over the high cost of air tickets. Now, not just air tickets, because uh, those who are also going via road has also um, have also commented or lamented about the cost of uh, moving from one point to the other. But yes, let's all let's start off with the um, those who have talked about the cost of traveling via air and uh, the tickets have actually gone high. Uh, some persons have said that, you know, moving from Lagos to Abuja, if you're taking a one-way ticket, is 185,000 naira, if not 200,000. And it's not been the same. So, I mean, movement, if, you're, if you say you're leaving Lagos for Delta State, you probably probably might be paying like 70,000 naira, if not, um, you know, less. Or if you don't pay 70,000, that's like maximum, you probably would be shuffling within 60,000, 50,000. Uh, that's for, you know, just the one way, right? And this is, hasn't really sat well with a lot of persons. I think that so many persons have not been able to make it to go spend time with your family because of the cost of transportation. But how, what do we blame this on? It's unusual. I mean, when you would compare that to uh, how many years ago, to 2019, to 2020, right? Uh, to 2021. It's totally very unusual. And some people have said the, the economic policy, I mean, it's just natural that when you have the demand on the high, uh, the prices of goods or services would be also on the high. And so is this just really uh, the economic policy or the natural law of demand and supply taking play here or taking place here? Or it's just more than that. Let's not forget that, you know, as a country, we have grappled with aviation crisis, uh, talking about the scarcity of aviation fuel. That's a Jet A1. That hasn't also been very fantastic. I think that this has contributed. Well, really, uh, apart from those who are traveling via air, those who are also going via road has have also complained about the cost of transportation. And I remember uh, listening around and I heard some people saying you know what I would never pay that amount just to go anywhere so some people probably wouldn't would have traveled but for the fact that the cost of transportation whether it's uh, via air or land is on the high some people have decided to stay back because they can't afford it but I hope that we're able to fix it because I remember once upon a time it was easy for you to take a ticket wherever it is that you're going to. I mean, you're looking at 19,000 naira, you're looking at 30,000. I mean, at 30,000, we're still complaining that it was high, but now you're probably looking at almost 100,000 naira and plus. That's a lot. Moving away from that, a man has admitted to stealing power cables to purchase uh, Christmas clothing for his girlfriend. <laughs> Very hilarious, but that's a crime. 
crime is a crime. However, uh, he's a suspect until he's been proven guilty by a court of competence jurisdiction. So um, let's bring you a background of the story. A suspect said that he stole power cables because he was apprehended, however, uh, to afford Christmas clothes for his girlfriend. It was gathered that residents of the community grabbed two of them, they were thieves, for stealing power cables in their community. It was also stated and gathered that this young man uh, was said to have been operating in Opalacha Ida, local government area in Kogi State, at a time when Nemesis caught up with them. Now, I know that we have also been very, uh, I mean, very big and great on, let's continue to pr protect public infrastructure, right? We know that government facilities, obviously, oh, it's government property, nobody owns it, and so uh, vandalism, you know, theft and all of that. These are, you know, these are public properties. And it, it's quite surprising that we also kind of make excuses. I've seen several comments as regards to this particular. Some people say, oh, he stole because he didn't have, he needed to, you know, make available, he should, he wanted to, it was such a good intention, an intention to, you know, um, fulfill his promise of making provision. I mean, buying Christmas clothes for his lady or his girlfriend, according to his, what well, he wants to keep to his promise. And so the only way he did that was that he, he had to do what he had to do. Do. Now, stealing public uh, infrastructure or facility is what it is. And as always, the devil is to be blamed for the act. And trust me, the young man or the suspect did not act differently. He said that the devil uh, should be blamed for that act because he, it wasn't him. Now, the devil is nowhere to, you know, physically defend himself and say, I was not the one that sent him more, right? <laughs> There's no devil, but that's the blame. But we cannot constantly excuse bad behavior uh, for the sake of poverty. And then we just constantly say, oh, because we don't have. It's a class of we don't have, we can't afford, and so it's okay for you to go uh, steal what does not belong to you. You're not just stealing, but you're actually stealing uh, what belongs to the entire public, to the community. Uh, because taking cables, stealing cables, uh, it's not just stealing, but you're, you know, taking what would provide power supply to your community. And that's for selfish interest. I'm hoping that the law will take its course and uh, the right thing will be done. And of course, it should be, it should serve as a deterrent to those who are engaged in this act. There's no excuse. Theft is theft and you've committed a crime. Uh, well, the law would always say until you're being proven guilty. And so we hope uh, that the law would take its course in this particular case. Some people say, oh, you can't say that because, oh, we have the politicians who are taking so much and no one is happening. He just stole a cable. Well, for how long will we continue to excuse bad behavior for the sake of poverty, for the sake that you do not have? I'm sure that there are other means and the, the, a lot of things that he probably would have done to raise the money if he wanted to lead to his words, right? If he, it's more almost like he was under pressure. But, you know, that's a decision at the end of the day. There are other means to generate revenue that probably might not be very um, white-collar-like, but, you know, you could engage in all the little uh, jobs that are available. Some people say they are menial jobs and earn a living rather than, you know, going to steal from a community at the end of the day it would affect your brother, your sister, and what have you. Well, it's very commendable also of the uh, members of the community. That's what we constantly say, that security is everyone's business. It's not just government business. So we can't always just mouth it and say security is everyone's business when you don't act your part. It's, it's okay. Let's just imagine that we all look out for our communities, wherever it is that we find ourselves. I'm sure the society will be a better place. Another on the top trending this morning is that traders have reacted to how rice is sold in the market. Uh, let's quickly take a look at this and when we return, we'll discuss some more. Whatever, 
Right from the rest, how they reuse the Jews' lives in front of the seller. When they bring a container, they don't know my book, what they sell out, they reduce it. Come on, like one robber, complete one robber of price, they come up for the rice. What they do? What they sell out? One more. Well, this been several reaction as to why um, you have a roadside trading, and some persons have said that uh, those who are actually in Nigeria, people in Nigeria, the so-called poor, are even very weakened because you need to buy stuff like a bag of rice, you know, oil and what have you. They always patronize the big malls around and um, the functional quality controls, the department, you don't have all of that. And so verifying everything before displaying on the shelves is very important. More often than not, they're offered cheap prices on almost every item, no room for useless markings and sizes of uh, consumers or customers, had less price increment. Uh, some people say that this is the reason why they patronize, you know, the roadside goods and what have you. But that also have, you know, a lot of implication. I feel like if we all act, you know, in the interest of everybody, like if national interest is important as against, you know, personal interest, then we would become, you know, a, a perfect country. Not necessarily perfect, but it would be great for us. If everybody takes action, if I am taking my action, my behavior and action over time, I'm considering uh, the betterment of the country, then it will be for the better good. And if everyone acting in the different sphere, let's say the president, governors, house of assembly, uh, the councillors, the chairman of local government, and what have you, and including the common man, let's even imagine that we all act uh, in accordance as we're acting. Our actions, at the end of the day, we have the interest of the nation at heart. I am sure that the country would go half, you know, 90% very good and maybe 10% because you can't have everyone complying. But that's it, we'll just take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the papers, we'll call it Off the Press, please stay with us.